So questions 28 to 30 in the Acer blue paper. So question 28, well, what we can find is where the pH is equal to three, the concentration of H uh, of hydrogen will be equal to 10 to the negative three. So at pH three, the concentration of hydrogen is equal to 10 to the negative three. If you do the same calculation using the pH formula for um, pH equals two, you'll find that the concentration of hydrogen is equal to 10 to the negative two. So therefore, when we go from a pH of three to a pH of two, our concentration of hydrogen increases by 10 times. And using the formula provided in question 28, we can comfortably say that the rate will also go up 10 times when we go from a pH of three to two. So the correct answer is B. So question 29 is quite simple if you know what you're looking for. And that's this, you've got to figure out the sort of change in the concentration and the rate um, when you go from experiment one to one of the other experiments, either experiment two or experiment three. So let's do that for experiment one and two. So um, when you go from one to two, you double the amount of S that you have. And um, you also see that the rate does not change. So this immediately rules out D because what happens in D is if you say double the um, rate of, sorry, the concentration of S in the um, answer D, um, well, if you double the concentration of S, the rate would double as well. And that's not true because we know from the results of the experiment that there is no rate change. So therefore D is ruled out. Um, as for one and three, well, one and three you'll find will rule in the answer A because when we double the amount of R that we have, our rate doubles, right? So say for A, right, we've got our initial rate, uh, which is equal to KR. Whenever we double the amount of this, the value overall of the rate will also double, right? So when we double the amount of R, our rate will double. That's what we're sort of seeing in this experiment. Therefore, the answer is A. So question 30 is one of those rare GAMSAT questions where you almost just need to rote learn the answers beforehand. What essentially we're describing in these graphs, uh, we'll take a look at this one. So this one describes those first and second order reactions. And what it's describing is we've got some sort of reactant X and it's been converted into another product. And over time, that X, since it's been converted, the concentration of X is going to go down. And it's going to go down in this nice curve fashion because the rate of conversion is dependent on the concentration of X. So naturally, since our, our concentration of X is very high at the start, the rate of conversion, the rate of depletion of X is going to be very quick. So we get this really fast drop off of X and then towards the end, it sort of levels off. So this graph is overall important for both, uh, representative, sorry, for both first and second order reactions. Um, and you just gotta remember it's a curved graph, goes down and it's for the concentration of X. A first order reaction, on the other hand, it is a straight line graph with a negative gradient and it has on the Y axis log E of uh, concentration X. And this describes a first order reaction. Whilst for a second order reaction, it, uh, it has a positive gradient, a straight line with a positive gradient, and on the y-axis is one on concentration x, so that's a second order reaction. So I just remember sort of what each of these graphs look like uh, so that you can sort of recall them. The answer for question 30 is therefore C. As we were describing a first order reaction and this graph is the one that is representative. A is incorrect as it is a straight line and not a curved graph. Uh, B is incorrect because that is a second order reaction and D is incorrect because that is uh, a this reaction but with a curved line and that is incorrect, it should be a straight line. So what essentially I sort of think is that you should just memorize the appearance of these graphs and so that's what I did for the GAMSA. I don't think you necessarily need to know a lot more about it. If you want to, you can definitely go ahead and learn a bit more about first and second order reactions and what they are. But uh, I mean, these questions don't often sort of come up in the game. So, so it's not necessarily the most efficient study learning them, but there's, there's definitely um, merit to that, to learning a bit more about it. But 
Personally, in my opinion, just memorize the graphs um, and focus your attention on other areas such as physics and chemistry, which can be a lot more impactful.